call the um, <coughs> April 16th, sorry, got to get oriented to time and place. Uh, April 16th meeting of the select board in session is now in session. Um, this evening we, we will reorganize, that will be the majority of the evening, which means that we will elect a new chair, uh, a new vice chair, and a new secretary. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mark Doxer was unable to make it this evening, um, which um, he deeply regrets not being, being able to be here. So we will um, have to do the uh, liaison assignments at our next meeting because we need a full board for that. Um, and that's, the, so the majority of the meeting, the point of this meeting is really for the board to reorganize itself and elect new officers. <coughs> before we do that, I'd like to, before we get into that, I would like, uh, to give a, a big warm welcome to Ann Landry and, and Mark, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, welcome to the board, Ann. Thank you so much, Ann. Would you, uh, would any of the board members, other two board members, like to say anything? Or I was going to have Ann say a few words. Way to put us on the spot, thanks. No, no, I, I, you know, it's my last night that I can do that. So. Um, I, I, it's, I'm excited to have you. Looking forward to working with you in the next year. Thank you very much. I've said all that to you before, Ann, yes. and, and said it again as mm -hmm. we walked in this morning. So welcome and join the party. Here we go. <laughs> very good. Um, well, thank you so much to the welcome from my fellow board members, and thank you uh, to the residents residents and voters of, Rev of Reading who have entrusted me with this responsibility, which I take very seriously. Um, regardless of whether you voted for me, I look forward to being of service to you. Um, and thank you to my family and, and supporters, some of whom are here tonight. Um, my husband, Ryan, and my son, Michael, are here. Um, so now it's picture time. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do the official. Is the, is the swear or the swearing uh, in Julie. people here? Come on up. We'll do the swearing in before okay. we do the, uh, the picture time with family. Okay. <laughs> so if you would raise your right hand, your left hand on the Bible, and here's the oath for you to right here. Okay. I solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as a member of the select board, according to the best of my ability and understanding, agreeably to the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the bylaws of the town of Reading. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, you should do that. Ryan, we were going to have a picture and we'll stand behind them. Are we all in this one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. That means you Me too? Yeah. I'm not elected. It doesn't matter.
Is he reading? He's gonna he's gonna read it. Um, do you want to start with the uh, reorganization or the? We're gonna we're gonna do, you know do the proclamation okay. and, and then get into the reorg. Um, why don't we do public comment? We can do that if you like. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so uh, I'd like to turn the meeting now over to John Halsey, who has a proclamation to read. Okay. Um, well, first, I think we have to um, move that the board proclaim the week of April 14th through April 20th, 2019, as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week here in Reading. So moved. Get a second. 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 All in favor? <laughs> okay. And so I'd like to um, share this proclamation with uh, our public safety officials who are here with us today. Um, and, you know, we, we don't do this often enough, but we get to have you visit us. You know, at least there's a week where there's kind of a thing where you're recognized. And, you know, in my opinion, before I read this proclamation, I just say to you over these, uh, over all the years I've lived in Reading, um, you know, it's just been, we always knew whenever we needed somebody, they'd get there. And, you know, the reason that they get there is because we've got, you know, a dispatch unit that works and kind of the whole team here in Reading is one that's always given me great comfort over 30 years. And, and I've had, you know, personal experience with, you know, with emergency visit. Um, Paul stayed away from that one. He didn't want to drag my big butt down the stairs. But, <laughs> but I will say that... Um, this is an important recognition for public safety, and um, let me read it. Uh, this proclamation reads that this is Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, whereas there are 11 public safety dispatchers working for the town of Reading, and our public safety dispatchers serve the citizens of Reading with dedication, loyalty, and pride. And whereas the citizens of Reading rely on public safety dispatchers as their vital link to our police, fire, ambulance services, and our public safety dispatchers connect our citizens to our public safety providers who may apprehend a criminal, who may save their possessions from a fire, or who may save their life or the life of a loved one. Each year, the second week of April is dedicated to the people who serve as public safety telecommunicators. And in 1991, the United States Congress proclaimed Public Safety Telecommunications Week as a nationally recognized week. The week of April 14th through April 20th, 2019 has been proclaimed National Public Safety Telecommunication Week in recognition of the contributions of public safety dispatchers and other telecommunicators nationwide. Now, therefore, we, the Select Board of the Town of Reading, do hereby proclaim the week of April 14th through 20th, 2019 as Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Reading, and we urge all citizens to recognize the considerable contributions of our public safety dispatchers, and we present this with, um, with much appreciation. So. Well, for those of you who don't already know, Deputy Chief Clark and Jackson here. Yeah. I just I really don't have a lot to say other than thank you very much. I have had a great time here with the Reading Police Department, Reading Fire Department, and the town of Reading over the years that I've been here. I have the luxury of working with some amazing people throughout my years. And um, that's really all I have to say. Is thank you very well, much. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Again, thank the board for taking time out of your busy schedule for us. It's very important. The dispatchers are your first. You walk in the police station, the first people you see, you call 911, they're the ones answering the phone. They're making sure we get to where we need to go. And that job, believe me, is not for everybody. That's a very tough job. It's one of, the, I'd have to say, one of the hottest jobs in the town by far. And it takes a special breed of people in there to be able to multitask, remember where everybody is, get everything where it needs to go, remember where everybody is. 
and still be pleasant and smile and help them along in some of the most stressful situations. Um, I know I couldn't do the job, mm -hmm. so for our head dispatcher, Vicki Avery, and for the other dispatchers to work for us, I just want to say thank you very much thank for your hard work. I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant Kevin Brown, who's my night patrol commander, who's actually a dispatch supervisor who helps uh, work and ensure that everything goes smoothly. I'd like to thank our officers, Cody Costa. Josh Graciali and Sergeant Matt Edson for coming tonight and show us support. And I just wanted to just say, um, again, thank you for your time. It's important to recognize the hard work that they actually do. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to just mention again, thank you very much for yeah, the fire department. I'd like to point out to you, as we said when you, when you read, that there was 11 public dispatchers. I want to point out, I spent uh, far too long today with Lieutenant Brown. <laughs> And, uh, and Vicky like four hours today going over a variety of different things. And one thing we don't mention all the time, Vicki Avery, 18 years doing this job, taking those phone calls that are hot registered when they come across. When I was in there today, Sue Tapley and then Debbie Haynes were sitting in there when I went in to say hello. That's 39 years of experience sitting in that room. That's what we have in some of It's awesome. I know Joe Pagnotta is probably sitting there watching TV, so I'll wait for him. and Chris Finn both have 12 years apiece. That's a lot of dedication. You know, coming in and, and sitting there for that long, taking those phone calls that we don't hear unless the, the news wants to make it very hot wrenching for us. They listen to it every day. And then they take those phone calls, they send us on our way, give us the resources that we need, and then go back and continue talking to those people that are having the worst day of their life. So thank you very much for what you do. I can't do it. Okay. I couldn't have received this without everybody that works for me and with me. Just so that this wasn't just for me. Very appreciated very much. Thank you. John, thank you very much yeah, for doing that. Um, so, uh, if, if the board is, if it's acceptable to the board that we hear public comments, so people who are here for public comments can uh, say what they'd like to say before uh, we get into our, our very mm -hmm. important business. Mm -hmm. yep. So, um, with that, I'd like to open it up for public comments. Um, again, remember that because of open meeting law, the, the board cannot cannot respond to your comments or questions, but we do hear them, and um, on the questions we will try to get back to you, or on the suggestions we will, tr we will take that into consideration. Um, I noticed that one member of the public is standing in the corner, Mr. Haggerty, or, or is it Congressman Haggerty, or? It's his excellency. Representative. Representative. Um, Haggerty, um, thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it very much. I just wanted to come to congratulate everybody in their election, Tim Ian and, and of course Mark as well, and, uh, and send my best wishes to them and their families and, and, uh, and say hello to everybody. So I'm sure I'll be back at some point soon to talk to everybody and we're working through budgets and uh, all that fun stuff now in Boston. And, yeah. uh, I'm doing everything I can to make sure we have the resources here and ready to continue to do all the great work you guys do for the community. So 
Just bring money. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Cards and letters, send money. <laughs> Let's not chase them away, Bill. Um, uh, but sincerely, I look forward to coming back sometime and talking more with you about the budget and uh, everything that's going on and, and give you a little bit of an update and answer any questions you might have and, and hear back from certainly uh, members of the selectmen and, of course, members of the community as well. Representative Haggerty, we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for coming. Sounds great. Take care, everybody. Thanks for visiting. Right. Thank you. Okay, so are we ready for public comment? Uh, yep. So, yeah, I'm in the back. Here. Um, I'm actually an ophthalmologist in Reading. Uh -huh. um, and I'm an officer down the street here. I did send some letters to the board. Could, could I interrupt you for a second? I forgot to remind people to state their n name, which you did, yeah. and their address. Um, 20 Pine Meadow Drive, 20 Pine Meadow uh, Reading, Mass. So at Reading Health Center. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I did send a letter to the board regarding the change of the fee limits on Hazel Street. So I just wanted to make a comment on it that I thought that this was that the changes and making a change to a uniform speed limit I think was probably a good idea. Um, and but however the speed limit to 30 miles an hour I think is a little bit too slow for that road and I think there was some discussion regarding that but it was sort of minimal at the meeting I was not uh, aware of that meeting to be honest with you uh, until sort of after the fact when they put up the sign that said that they were going to lower the speed limit. So I did send a letter and I thought that uh, I would just like to say that the policeman did a very good job at looking at the speed limits and doing the compliance and risk uh, study. Um, however, I think as according to the uh, sort of methods and practices of setting speed limits, and I think everybody wants to be, people don't want to go above the speed limit. I think that that's the case. And people would like to maintain, of course, this 85% compliance. So uh, looking at that and actually looking at the speed data, it actually suggests that the speed limit should, that most of the people are, are driving at 35 miles an hour or greater. And actually in those zones that were less than 35 miles, the speed limit was, most of the people are actually driving more than 30 miles an hour. And I think it's sort of, that's a big, you know, a major thor thoroughfare, there's like 12,000 cars as they said, going back and forth on that road and I think uh, that uh, the speed limit of 30 is, I think, painfully slow if you ask some of the residents because they see them as patients. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, say this is really a little bit probably too slow, that probably a 35 mile an hour zone would be reasonable to set throughout the whole area except for the school. So that was my, that's my comment. I think I'd like you to reconsider that speed limit because I do, I do think it affects, you know, 12,000 people, 12,000 drivers a day. And it, it is a major thoroughfare. And I think people don't want to speed. I think they prefer really not to be speeders. So, but I think you've got to be reasonable in what that speed limit should be. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And, and I, did, we, I did read your email. It was very well presented. Yes. Hi, Demetra at St. Chris. Oh, did you know? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, I live on Oak Street, 106 Oak Street. I have two. So, first, I want to say my phone number. What is the police dispatch phone number? Is it 944-1212? My number when I moved here was 942-1212. So, I got all sorts of phone calls, and that lady has the hardest job in Thank God I changed my number. Um, I'm a member of town meeting, and there's I am I have questions about there's a patch of land that's up for sale that is pr proposed that we buy it for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I'm concerned. I went and walked it, and I want to make sure I walked along sort of a big triangle along the road that heads up to the gun club. The hockey rink is over here. I walked all through that. And it seems very close to wetlands to me, and that's sort of a thing for me. So and then I, it is my understanding that the CONCOM, Conservation Commission, was not involved or not asked, not brought on board with this. I don't know if that's normal. It strikes me as it would be a good idea. Um, and I wonder how do I see why that, I don't understand how that land can be developable unless it's sort of, in the olden days when we didn't understand the importance of wetlands, it was called not wetland. So I have questions and I also, I have that concern. I don't know if you can answer those questions now. It looks like something's happening. 
I'm just trying to find something to point we're, towards. We're actually, Dimitri, we're not we're not supposed to respond, but we will we will well, get. Then my official ask would be that the conservation commission should know that they don't know about it. They should look at it. And I would like to know as a town meeting member, obviously mm -hmm. I want more information than what was presented to me in the articles by the town manager and by the select board. Yeah. Now the town manager may respond. <laughs> um, we just can't. <laughs> Um, I'll say that uh, if uh, a landowner wants to make a donation to town, then that would be the appropriate time for ConsCon to accept a donation, in which case we would skip town meeting entirely. Um, these landowners did not want to make a donation, so the appropriate channel is for the town as a whole to buy it, and then for future discussions to be potentially that one or more of the parcels could be then given to ConsCon. Um, in terms of the parcel itself, I'll just say that an independent appraiser uh, did recognize wetlands and did not include those, but did find room for four single-family house lots and appraised it as such. And that appraisal was about a million three. But you're right, there's some wetlands in there for sure, and, and there's other parcels very much wetter than that. Okay. And also, like, the guns go off all day long, so who right. wants to live there? Right. <laughs> so did the appraiser just look at the land or did the appraiser no, he look at the it. reality of he, he did <laughs> no he, he walked it he walked it a couple of times once when the gun club was in full swing okay so yes okay thank you yep. more town meeting <laughs> <laughs> anyone else yes uh, hi everyone my name is Kristen Agresti I live at 261 Central Street in Sargas but I work for the stop and shop in Reading I've been with the company for 33 years and as everybody probably well knows now, we're on strike. Uh, Stop and Shop made over, what, $2 billion? Two, over $2 billion. Dollars last year. Uh, we're on strike. We're a union shop. Uh, there's 31,000 employees that are being affected, and we're kind of just asking for the support of the town. This is my business agent, Sabina, and we'd just like to say a few words on it. So this company does make a lot of money and profits. Um, they're an outside company. They're from the Netherlands. Um, they don't treat their workers back in their homeland the way they're treating the workers in this country, which is unfortunate. Um, they're looking to take away their pensions, vacation time, holidays, and this time and half is going away in the state little by little. So that means that people would be expected to work holidays, Sundays, um, with no added benefits. Um, they're proposing very small wages where these people are basically at a minimum wage. Um, the company is starting to promote propaganda to say that they are doing the best they can at the table to make this right for the worker. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case because they don't show up to sit and bargain in good faith. So we did have some people come to the store today that thought it would be a good idea for us to come to this meeting tonight just to let people be aware that we've got um, well over 100 employees in the store that um, work very, very hard. Their loyalty to the store and the business is, is acknowledged, but this company is doing a very dirty deed. Um, and so we just ask for some support. Um, we've been asking for people not to cross the picket line and show some support for these workers who obviously during this Easter time have to go without a paycheck. Um, so, and we do also want to thank the people that have come to support and we've seen a big outreach of people dropping food off and donations of drinks and things like that, which we really think the world of. So we want to, you know, say thank you for that. But we just kind of wanted to be to this meeting to maybe spread the word and, and you know, let people know what's going on in, in this town. And we appreciate the time. And the Reading Police Department has been phenomenal. Yes, I do want to add that. Phenomenal. Yes, they have been outstanding. They're there for support. Um, they're very gracious. Um, they get what's going on. They're union members themselves. So they're wonderful people and they've done a great job and we do want to thank them for that. Even though Stop and Shop is paying them a lot of money for, we've got a lot of support out there and that's great. We love that they're there um, and we do also want to thank them for all their hard work. Thank you very much for, for, for your words.
Just gotta go back and do the leg. I'm gonna go stand on the line again. 12 hours a day, you can probably tell that I've got a sunburn on my face. Put some thank sunblock you. on. Thank you. Thanks for your support. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anyone else? Bill, this is my last meeting and you're not going to make a public comment. <laughs> I mean, my, sorry, my, my last meeting is chair. Why do you I think he's while giving you a little gift? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I don't want to behave myself. Oh, well. All right. Go win the next meeting. Okay. Um, seeing no more public comment, we will now, I will soon hand the gavel over to Bob to run the uh, reorganization part of the meeting and then the new chair uh, will run the rest of the meeting. I'd just like to take a minute or two to say what an honor it has been to serve uh, as chair of this board. It has been a humbling experience. It's been a learning experience, yeah. a maturing one, and, um, and, and, I, and I highly recommend it to anyone. <laughs> It's, it's a, it is a great job. Um, from, from the public's perspective, I, I think any of you who have sat on boards or committees know that there are different types of boards and committees, and they're sort of like roads. Um, we started off the year uh, on a bit of a rocky road, you know, um, but we still, I felt we still kept moving forward, even though that it was rocky. And then as the year progressed, um, we got better at it, and I think the, the road smoothed out. So um, we're sort of, if you will, on dirt road and starting to pr produce more and um, move forward. And I'm looking forward to um, getting off of the horse and buggy and moving into a nice, a nice uh, maybe a hybrid car or <laughs> an electric car and move on to some pavement uh, for the next chair, for the next year. So with that, I will, um, do I throw this at you, Bob? Or? <laughs> you can just leave it there. <laughs> you, you don't need a gavel. No, I don't need a Okay. Gavel. Okay, thank you, Andy. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll be quick. I just want to open the floor for nominations for chair. Nobody wants the job. <laughs> yeah. Andy? Um, I'd, li I'd like to nominate Vanessa Alvarado for chair. Okay. Um, are there any other, other members that would like to make a different nomination? Sometimes the person not here gets put up for tasks. <laughs> I'm all for that. I will eventually, yeah. Uh, any other nominations? Okay, I'd ask the board to uh, please uh, accept that motion and move to close the hearings, or close the nominations. So moved. Second. Um, if you'd just mind voting. All in favor. Okay. All those in favor of uh, Vanessa Alvarado as the next chair of the board. Okay, thank you. It's all yours, Vanessa. It's, it's just Ann. It, it's the, the right thing. I have to raise the. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, I will now open nominations for vice chair. Um, oh, hey, yeah. do you want to? No, go ahead. Um, I'd like to nominate uh, John Halsey as vice chair. A second. Okay, uh, any other nominations? All those in favor of John Halsey as chair? Vice chair? Vice chair. <laughs> yeah, don't give up the job yet. <laughs> uh, all right, I will now accept nominations for the role of secretary. Um, and I actually spoke with um, Mark, who can't be with us this evening, and so I would like to nominate Mark as uh, secretary. <laughs> that's oh, I'll second that one. That's, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'll third that, yeah. Uh, any other nominations? All those in favor? All right. That'll teach them that show. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so, moving on to the next item on the agenda, we have a hearing for a driveway request. Uh, do we have a public notice? Yes. Is it in my packet? Yes. Uh, I did not. The vice chair has to step in and fill in this. Um, and as our new. <laughs> 
Here it is. John, would you be so kind as to read the hearing? Yes, I will. I've got to find the secretary. Email. Let's give it to John, yeah. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, to the inhabitants of the town of Reading, please take notice that the select board of the town of Reading will hold a public hearing on April 16th at 7.30 p.m. in the select board meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on a request from the property owner for a second driveway curb cut at 321 Pearl Street. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the town manager's office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, Monday, Wednesday and Thursday from 7.30 to 5.30, Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7, 7 o'clock p.m. And we'll be in the select board packet on the website at www.readingmass.gov. All interested parties are intended are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing um, by email prior to 6 p.m. on April 16th, 2019 to the town manager. Um, this is by order of uh, Robert W. LeLaSure, town manager, and dated April 9th, 2019. Uh, Bob, will you be explaining the question? Certainly. Uh, the applicant here? Is that okay? Well, do you want to say anything, Ryan? Uh, I can go here. We'll get you on, Bob. Ryan Percival, town engineer. Nice to meet you. Oh, that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> so just briefly, um, we have driveway rules and regulations and um, which stipulate you cannot have a driveway, two driveways with minimum distance of 125 foot separation between the two. Um, the proposed driveway, which is on the left hand side, um, which is currently an existing gravel driveway, is only 31 feet from the um, existing paved driveway. The reason for this driveway, which I will tell you was actually denied by the engineering office per the driveway rules and regulations, and then subsequently went to the PTTF for review. Um, the driveway during the review for the PTTF, um, this driveway will be utilized for ADA access to the stair area on the left hand side. They have issues with getting from the current driveway going down Pearl Street and then getting into their house um, for handicap access. So they propose to have a secondary driveway to do such. Um, engineering and public safety and the rest of the PTF, PTTF had no issues uh, or objections to this driveway. I will tell you there was also a driveway, budding driveway? Yes. That um, recently, back in 2016, was approved for a secondary yep. driveway as well. So what's in front of you is a waiver for the driveway rules and regulations to allow the secondary driveway to be put in. And we saw from the packet there are no concerns from... No, there's no concerns fire. from public safety. There's also They're also on a curve, which makes it a little bit more difficult for them to come out of the driveway and mm -hmm. come down Purple Street, which if you've been on that road, it's narrow to begin with, mm -hmm. um, and to get up into that area to be dropped off onto... Um, where they would come in for handicap access because there was a great change there. It's difficult for them to do it on that existing driveway. Okay. Um, any questions? I drive by there every day, and I, you know, it, it just seems like a, where the gravel driveway is seems to be a natural place to have your driveway, to be honest exactly. with that. Um, <laughs> and particularly if um, there's ADA issues, just, I, you know, I and uh, one of um, this gentleman's neighbors came to us a couple of years ago for the for this mm -hmm. similar thing. I mean, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think Pearl Street had the same kind of traffic patterns that it uh, does today mm -hmm. when yeah. those homes were built and those driveways were kind of the the downgraded driveways. And, um, so I, I think this is a good idea. I visit the site daily <laughs> when I drive by it, so. Uh, great. So I will open it up to comments from the public. Seeing none, um, can I have a motion to close the hearing on the driveway request? Uh, move that the board close the hearing on the driveway request regarding 321 Pearl Street. Second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, okay. Can I have the motion to approve the driveway request? 
move that the board approve the driveway request for 321 Pearl Street as presented and amended. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Need a second. Oh, yes. second. Second. Jump the gun. All those in favor? Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're a little ahead of schedule. Um, Bob, do we have any information yet regarding the next door recreation? They're no, still next door. Okay. I'll have to go look. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to do board liaison and town manager reports now? Sure. Um, do we? Why don't we start with uh, liaison reports? Um, John, why don't you kick us off? Yeah. Um, so this one is actually a little bit, uh, well, it's not really dated, but we did we skipped them at the last meeting. Um, and this really is um, in connection with um, uh, my assignment to uh, Postmark Square. Um, I, we've all got um, responsibilities relative to some of the building projects that are going on. And I, I just think it's timely to just keep you up to date on what's going on. I'm sure, you know, most everybody that's watching this or sitting here or sitting with us um, sees it going on on a regular basis. It's um, in full steam. Um, and, you know, one of the things when you start doing the kind of work that they're doing, um, there is a natural concern, kind of the way that the topography is laid out there with the amount of rain that we've been having. Uh, but I will tell you that the way that they've arranged this project, um, they have a storm uh, water management pro uh, program that's being managed on site during construction. Ultimately, that'll tie out, you know, to the municipal stormwater, which is kind of being redone. You know, they're redoing how that's going to be done. So they've actually got um, a detention area on the west side of the building, and that's pretty important um, because they've got neighbors over there. Um, and I can tell you, I've talked to the, the, the abutting neighbors, um, and they're having a steady flow of communication, which is awesome it's just kind of exactly what we'd hope for mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and frankly it's you know we have we've met the developers one of which is a, a, a Reading resident it's not a surprise that we're having to that kind of attention paid to that kind of work um, it's pretty interesting that um, they have not been affected in any way and there was actually uh, in a prior iteration while it was the post office um, a couple of the neighbors did have some water issues actually um, so uh, that improvement is going forward it's it's interesting I, I, I visit the site usually about once every week or ten days and um, you know kind of get a hard hat tour which is kind of interesting actually um, the uh, <clears throat> there's a they actually get a, a day like we like we had yesterday with all that rain um, they get kind of radar reports from a civil engineer as to what's going on what the expectation is what the rainfall will be and they kind of adjust themselves accordingly um, one of the things that has been happening since I reported last um, it, kind of because we skipped last time was the excavation of the back is going full steam you know one of the changes that they made was that um, they made a decision to rather than you know cut and paste the basement floor they just decided at their cost to take everything out and they just thought it would make for a better project because um, yeah, nice. Kind of like they want you to dance to stand up and yeah. get that out of your I, I, I don't know how to change the, the <laughs> ring. Step on it. Yes, yes. I usually throw it against the wall. It stops usually when that happens. Um, so the excavation's going on full steam and has been now for several weeks. And, you know, they've taken some other, I, I think, very proactive steps. They've kind of built a gravel exit out of the... Um, out onto Haven Street um, so that it'll minimize the amount of dirt that's coming out and they're actually policing that area every day following you know a day of excavation so um, there has been one complaint and um, the complaint was a was a noise complaint 
um, they had discovered some ledge that they didn't realize they had, and um, they needed to spend an afternoon, you know, with the with a hammer. And um, I, they went and visited the neighbor, explained exactly what was going on. Um, the neighbor understood what was going was happening, and appreciated that they got it done quickly and, and moved on. So, um, I think in general, um, this project is is really exactly kind of the model that uh, I think we're looking for, where there's good communication with the abutting neighbors, um, the plans are moving forward as they were expected or they're improved on. Um, there's good communication between these developers and uh, Town Hall. I, I think yes. I'm speaking correctly when no I say question. that, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, I think this is, we're gonna expect more of the same. Um, the next thing that you'll see, if it didn't, I think it might have started today, is the forms will be out where all the excavation's been going on, and it'll start pouring, and uh, you know it'll start pouring concrete and, uh, for its underground parking garage. <coughs> so, um, that's kind of what's going on at Coast Mark Square. And that's all I have for right now. Great, thank you, Andy. Um, yes, I went to a climate advisory committee meeting um, last Wednesday. And the take-home message from that is they are <coughs> donating a tree uh, to town. I can't find my notes on exactly the type of tree, but um, they will be dedicating that at um, at at um, um, not Birch Meadow. Oh, uh, Barrows. At Barrows. Thank you. I knew it was one of the bees. <laughs> Um, and Bob, do you know the time for that? I don't. Okay. So, um, but please look on on the town website. We'll, we'll get we'll get the word out about the time. Um, the other the other thing is, um, I thought Gene Borowski was going to show up tonight and and do the promotion for Reading 375. As you know, this summer we have a big celebration going on. The Reading 375 committee is doing a lot, is putting in a lot of volunteer hours to uh, make this event possible and, and uh, make it successful. So um, I will try to give a brief version of which the points that she uh, like or the, or the committee likes me to get across. Um, they would love to see any and all elected officials uh, take a selfie with a t-shirt or, or a button that are the, the t-shirts and buttons are for sale they're at RCTV I believe they um, are at um, the book right on books around the corner and um, I believe the shirts are at Reading Trophy. Um, so, but anyway, they would like to see us get out there and take a selfie with a button around town. Um, I am remiss at doing that, and, and I will do so. Um, you can again, you can support um, Reading 375 by uh, buying a T-shirt or buying a button. Um, they're very. The buttons are three seventy-five. The T-shirts are twenty, um, and all the proceeds go to support re the Reading three seventy-five celebrations. Um, so, I just uh, I, I'll, I'll cut it short here. But know that the the events start. The celebratory events start on May thirty-first, and we'll go to. June 15th, please visit their w website and uh, look for the events that they have up. There's a lot of, uh, I can't recommend them enough. And that is all I have. Okay. Yeah. So, although I'm not an official liaison for the project, um, Mark Doxer and I last week attended the Wakefield Zoning Board's um, meeting, um, part of which dealt with the Tarrant Lane project. Most of the traffic impact of that project will be in Reading. Um, there was, uh, there were representatives from uh, an association that had conducted a traffic study and they, they went over the traffic study as well as the slightly reduced traffic impact based on the now projected 
um, reduction in units from 190 to 173 units. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, um, the, the traffic impact will have a negative impact on Reading. They're pro projecting that what's now rated in um, a E on a scale of A through F um, at uh, South South Street and Main is now pr projected to be be an F. Um, and they the developer did say um, perhaps that could be um, be. Um, diminished and have a, a lesser impact if the state were willing to uh, extend the amount of, of time at the light. Um, it seems like there's a lot that's still very much up in the air with respect to that project. Um, one member of the board talked about wanting Wakefield to be a good neighbor to Reading in, in this process, but uh, design, um, including number of units still seems to be up in the air and uh, any um, safety concerns and whether the developer could do something to address uh, safety concerns still is also an open question. They've extended the hearing to May 8th. Um, it didn't, there was no indication that everything would be wrapped up by May 8th, um, but the, the conversation continues May 8th with a focus on uh, on architecture and design. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, so I have two reports. Uh, last month, the ad hoc committee to consider a human rights commission met. We had our very first meeting. It was incredibly productive. Um, we will need a new um, member of this board to join me uh, on that ad hoc. So once we do the liaison assignments, we can determine that. Uh, the CPDC um, met a couple of weeks ago. They're reviewing some updates to policy, specifically around CBD and hemp products, um, in addition to mixed use, new use, um, and considering changes to expansions or additions to single families um, to have some amount of control over um, conversions to two families. So. With that done, um, Bob, given that we haven't heard yet from recreation, do you want to? I poked him. They'll be here when he's ready. Okay, know. great. Um, you want to start with the um, town manager report? Certainly. <clears throat> A couple of dates. Um, on Thursday, the 25th, next week, uh, the Garden Club has an Adopt an Island kickoff meeting. That's the second night of town meeting, so really no staff or elected officials will be able to attend. But they will be joining you um, at your next meeting on May 7th to um, help promote their plant sale on the common, which is scheduled for the 18th of May. Um, also, we're having a new resident open house on Tuesday, April 30th. Um, I was not able to make the first one last year. I was actually on vacation. Um, <clears throat> this year, I'll be very interested to see it. Um, we got a lot of really good feedback. Um, we, we, through realtors, we get lists of people who have moved to Reading recently. And we just reach out and all the various um, departments are represented, and as well as some elected officials. Um, this will be at the library, and uh, Amy is largely in charge of it, although there are others. Um, and it was really, again, very, a very successful thing last year. We just invite you all again to come Tuesday night, April 30th. You don't have a meeting scheduled. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Dr. John Doherty, who did something that was insane yesterday for 26.2 miles. Mm -hmm. uh, he ran on the marathon, and for those that know John, he also had plantar fasciitis and wasn't able to walk last week. So his, his, his real test was when he finally got on his feet to start the marathon, and he was able to finish the marathon. I have a great deal of respect for that, and I give him a lot of congratulations. And I talked to him early this morning. He was at his post, ready for the day. So he was a little sore, but uh, again, congratulations to John. He ran for Rosie's place, so mm -hmm. it was a really very nice accomplishment. Um, <clears throat> last week, in rather hasty fashion, uh, the town manager had to adopt some design rules and regulations. Um, many of our peers were calling emergency selectmen and select board meetings last week. There was an FCC deadline of April 14th over the weekend that had slipped some people's attention, and there was some misinformation out about there of how it really wasn't a deadline. But as of Monday last week, we learned it was a deadline, or actually as of uh, Tuesday. 
Um, in Reading, we had a, the fortunate, well, we have a fortunate uh, experience of having a great town council, but we have some zoning bylaws that cover part of this issue already, and the only remaining issue, <coughs> I was able to adopt a policy because our general bylaws allow me to, to adopt DPW policies. So I won't say which communities I stole and changed the name, but it worked very well. Uh, it took me a grand total of 37 minutes to adopt eight pages of a, of a bylaw, so let any board and committee try to challenge that record. <laughs> and I'm told it's a very good one. So th that was a bit hasty, but we'll kick that over to the probably the CPDC in the future to uh, look at it. But if the town had no rules and regulations in place on the 14th, then basically um, the, the cable providers and specifically on 5G could start hanging things over on the public way and telephone poles at their discretion mm -hmm. and the town would have no say over it. So fortunately we, we avoided that. <clears throat> and lastly some, some really good news <clears throat> on health insurance. Um, we successfully finished our negotiation last week with the PEC. Uh, the PEC is a group of unions from the towns, the schools and the light department. Um, they voted last week 85 percent in favor. 0% uh, opposed and 15% absent um, to an agreement and I'm happy to announce that next year the premiums will be negative 3.5% and that followed a year of negative 0.6% the year before. So there probably aren't many private sector or public sector communities that have two consecutive negative numbers in health insurance. And perhaps most impressively we put together a very aggressive meeting schedule for next year starting in September. Uh, normally we don't start negotiating till March. We're going to start next September to really take a serious look at some, some big changes and big options. So I want to thank um, all the unions involved. They're a really good partner and our uh, budget as a result is, is really in very healthy shape. So that's all I have. Thanks, Bob. Um, I realized we were um, remiss earlier. Um, I want to take a moment to thank Barry Berman for his years of service to the town. Um, he was a strong advocate for economic development in town is one, and is one of the reasons um, why we've made the advancements that we have. Um, so thank you, Barry, if you're out there watching. Um, it was an honor to serve with you, and I wish you well going forward. Um, so as we continue... Uh, why don't we shift over to the town accountant update? Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, yes. Is it possible to uh, to ask a question of the town manager? Sure, absolutely. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> I was just thinking. Um, would it be possible to um, so issue some kind of statement or put something out on social media about this about to, in celebration of the success with the um, with, with the projections around the uh, health insurance? insurance? Sure. I, I was just I think it's the kind of thing that good news often doesn't get out there, and right. um, it's it's I think encouraging, and I think um, residents would be glad to know. Okay, thank you. Jump in and try. Okay. I just want to uh, congratulate Anne and Mark. Um, oh, thank you very much, board. Sharon. Welcome. So I'll start off by um, going over um, a few things, and then we'll move into a financial update. Um, our fiscal 18 audit is finally complete. We have our audited financials, and we'll be scheduling with the audit committee soon to go over those results. The audit did go well. There was no issues. Mm -hmm. um, it did, our finances were delayed a little bit because we needed a new gas B75 report that was provided by our actuary, which was delayed. Um, so we finally got that report, and in time for our continuing disclosure, which is wonderful. Um, and so. Um, the audit committee should be meeting soon. I know a select board mem member is usually assigned um, to that audit committee, um, and so I'm sure you'll be hearing about that soon. And then we also plan the audit for fiscal 19, so hopefully um, that will be coming soon. Our assistant town accountant has been training with me, and I've been able to train her on a few things and delegate things down. But as we're coming to the end of the fiscal year, um, it's crucial training time for her because there's a lot of things that happen at the end of the year that only happen once a year. Um, the processes that I go through when we close the year, certain journal entries that are only done once a year, um, closing this, the year in Munis, which is involved, is only done once a year. Free cash, calculation, Schedule A, tax recap. I really want somebody else to at least be 
familiar with what goes on in doing all of that. There's the end of year report that the school is respo responsible for, but I do provide um, information that they use in that report. So we're involved in a lot of different things. So I'm hoping to get her involved in as much of that this year as I humanly can because I feel like it would be very beneficial to all of us. <laughs> um, so that's going well. Training has been going well, so that is great. Um, I also wanted to give an update on our new cash uh, management module. I think I mentioned at the last meeting we had gotten a grant that NG, our Assistant Finance Director Treasurer, had applied for, um, and it gave us a cash management module through Munis and um, a new HR module. We have installed that cash management module, and now we're in process of doing some work on our end to get it up and running. It should provide increased efficiency for our cash reconciliation process. We have a lot going on, so cash reconciliation is a time-consuming process just by sheer volume, and it helps us match some things automatically, which makes it so much faster. So hopefully it works the way we hope. Um, so I if I get an update on that would be nice. So I'm going to go into an update of where we are um, as of April 11th. Um, that was when I ran these reports. I, these did show in your packet. I think they started on page 5D1 if you wanted to follow along there, but I'm going to put up on the screen in case anybody's watching. I'm going to start with the general fund revenues. Wow, that's small. How does it make this bigger? There you go. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Zoom. Oh, Zoom. Yeah, that would be right. Zoom to good page. I'll try the 75 Yeah. Where's the percentages? If you zoom to it, does that give you an option? It's this different page. Uh, just oh, here it is. Sorry. I'm not familiar with this format. Okay. Oh, you think 75 would be enough? Maybe a little big, but it is in your packet. These are the revenues summarized by category. And I highlighted a few things that would stand out as a little um, strange and would kind of draw my attention to look closer. So at this point of the year, revenues kind of tend to come in a, you know, pretty equally across the year. And so at this point of the year, I would expect revenues to be in that 75 to 80% range. So anything that falls significantly below there, I'm going to look a lot harder. <laughs> and so some of the items when I'm looking, um, and this is just the high level review, I might drill into other things as well, but I highlighted a couple things that did draw my attention enough to want to provide back up to you. So um, payment in lieu of tax came in at 55.8. I'm like, wow, that's low. Um, of course, I probably didn't recall what happened last year. But um, when I drilled into this, I noticed, and I actually documented it for you down below, payment in lieu of tax. Um, RMLD pays about $300,000 in payment in lieu of tax. And instead of quarterly, they pay it by annually. So they pay January and June. And so that second payment isn't in there. So it's enough, because it's a smaller line item, to cause that to look kind of funky. And then um, other support um, is actually includes um, some rental of what's well, a, a support for facilities of 100,000 and 25,000 from cemetery lots that supports our general fund budget. And one of those supports hasn't been recorded yet because um, it comes to the school department and waiting for their approval to book that entry. So those look a little strange, but they're perfectly okay um, from my perspective at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the expenses. So I run this report the best way I can to make it so that you're not looking at 100 pages of document. <laughs> so I, I do it high level. I, I run the expenses by department in the way that it would be most helpful to look at because we do, um, for most departments, both salary and expense at town meeting. There are some departments that are excluded from that. That would be the school department is voted bottom line, facilities is voted bottom line. Snow and ice, those are some examples where we wouldn't be kind of voting salary expense, it would be a bottom line number. But I usually will run a report like this just to kind of make sure that nobody's negative on any one of the lines that they're voting and that the percentages seem in line with my expectations. And so at this point, I feel like things are in line with my expectations. Um, you know, expenses don't tend to be expended equally throughout the year, so when they're a little bit high, I might look at them, but it wouldn't you know, necessarily mean anything's wrong. Salaries, I would be a little bit concerned if something is more than 75, 80% at this point because I'd be looking to see do we have a transfer scheduled at April Town Meeting if it looks like we're trending high. Mm -hmm. Nothing really drew my attention too much in the general fund. 
except a couple items I just figured I would clarify for you. This line here, this 401 DPW trash, no street and lighting, that's three separate lines of the budget. <laughs> um, and so, and it looks rather crazy because it says we spent 202% of salaries in it. I just kind of point out in my comment that it is bottom line, so you could be negative one line and positive in another line as long as overall you're, you're, you're not in a deficit, you're fine. But it's also a line that actually is combining three different budget lines from the um, the actual budget report that you see at town meeting. So, and, and when I drilled into this a little bit further, I realized even though it looks like everything's all well and good, when I looked into snow and ice even further, I found that there was a, a deficit that we need to cover at April town meeting. So up until a week or two ago, there wasn't one. So bills just keep trickling in. Mm -hmm. And so it's fortunate that we are all looking periodically because we, we now know that we need a transfer at April town meeting that wasn't needed a couple weeks ago. So. Um, so that's that's another line that drew attention, and then also, yeah. Um, may I ask a quick question on that? Mm -hmm. So for the salaries, um, it, it looks. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like you've already used twice the amount that we expected to use, and it's not even the end of the year. Is there a reason for that? Or? Well, because most of it's probably snow and ice wages. Because um, a lot of the money that we spend in s snow and ice is the people going out and doing the plowing. Yep. Um, and so mm -hmm. it's just how it's distributed amongst the lines. But as I said, it's, it's a little bit deceiving because snow and ice is in here along with DPW trash and lighting. But all of these particular items are actually voted bottom line. And so it, if sal it, it can be used either way. They're kind of transferable. You could have extra money on expense and use it on salary and vice versa. So sometimes Sometimes they're contracting out for some of their, um, you know, snow removal, and sometimes it's being done by, you know, depending on how bad a storm is. So a lot of times I would say salaries is probably very heavy for us for how we remove snow. Mm -hmm. But as long as overall it doesn't go over the overall budget that has been, you know, assigned for that yeah. line item, yeah. we're good. Um, and, and, it, and it could change from year to year. They could use more contracted staff, and then it would be expenses. So right, right. And I understand that this is. Uh, Sort of guessing for the future when you plan yeah for these when events. they're when they're projecting it right. maybe okay. based on history but year to year it could be different depending on what kind of storms how sure. major the storms are how how much our staff can cover on their own and how much they have to call in extra staff so. yeah okay thank you and then another item I highlighted because um, it looked very high percentage wise is debt. And when I look into that further, I say, okay, well, that's fine because all I have is one debt payment left and there's plenty of money to cover. So, and it's due in June. So, so that's kind of some of what I'm doing when I'm looking at it is, does all of this make sense? And when I see a number that's really high, are we in danger of going over or do we have a transfer at town meeting? And there is no need for a transfer here because there's plenty of money there. There's only one debt payment left that needs to be paid. So that's the general fund. I'm going to go ahead and show you the enterprise funds. So as far as water and sewer and stormwater, they're projecting, um, I think they're kind of pacing a little bit. Oop, I'm going to make this one bigger. <laughs> Not that big. Is that viable? Maybe. <laughs> Does this actually make it to the big full screen? No. no. You know, if you, you know, the tool, Sharon. Yeah, um, Sharon, if you hit that, um, see the sidebar? The yeah. Y, the, on the close right that. Make that, that go. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. And now you can make it bigger there. if you want. It'll fit on the page. You think I need to make it 100? Yeah. So hard when it's behind you to know what people can say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you can see that for water, we have 89.6% of our revenues that we projected collected, and we've got two and a half months left to collect. I have no concerns that we're going to have a deficit in revenue for water. I mean, not to say it couldn't happen, but... Will we have a surplus over budget? Yeah, it looks like we will. Um, but the, it's hard to say, but I mean, uh, judging by this, I would say yes. Um, or did I actually oh, all of them on one? Sorry, I closed it and I shouldn't have. Do that again. This I don't know that. Okay. 
if I scroll down further up. Yes. So is it safe to say, could, could we talk for just a second for the benefit of the whole board? Mm -hmm. um, we're going to, um, on the water revenues, Yep. we're going to exceed um, kind of to the point of a previous discussion not long ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important for us to note this yep. for the next time it comes up. Mm -hmm. Sharon, is exceeding our revenue, um, is that a historical consistency? So does that, do we tend to have a surplus every year or is this an anomaly? It seems like we have a surplus every year, but I mean, we do have, a, we tend to have a conservative budgeting style to ensure that we don't have deficits that we need to make up for. So there, I think it's, you should have some regeneration in this area. You don't want to be so tight with it that you're not actually collecting all of it. So I, I feel like we do have regeneration and we have over the last several years. I can't tell you off the top of my head what the trend is because I wasn't thinking about that. But, but we do tend to have regeneration in all three um, in the varying levels. For future discussions, it, to John's point, it might be helpful to have historical data on what the yeah, regeneration yeah. is. Yeah. We definitely have it. I just don't have it with me. Because and, regeneration anecdotally, I seem to remember this conversation, you know, over the last five years. But I, I think for next year, mm -hmm. it would be valuable for us to, you know, well, pull I that in because we just had this discussion yeah. literally, you know two meetings ago yeah um, and I think it would be valuable for us to be able to next year look at that history and look at where you where your for your forecasts are so close mm -hmm. to, all the time I mean if you tell us we're gonna have a you know in excess revenue mm -hmm. I believe it because yeah, yeah. that's what happens you know I mean um, you know your skills in that area have been you know are demonstrated over and over again so i think that'd be helpful to us for next year I agree. maybe the next so, time we meet i could even give you that historical data just so you have it so it's not lost though the, the problem is we talk about water and sewer rates yeah you know like mm -hmm. i agree if we can wrap this into a future discussion on rates um that would be helpful yeah. because it'll inform our decision on, on how we set those rates bob did you have a yeah, there's two uh, forces at, at work here that's difficult to isolate uh, one is the ongoing conservation by people of water usage mm -hmm. but then the other is new water customers mm -hmm. yeah. um, the town you know we know how many accounts but we don't necessarily know really how much water is new that's being used um, the board did face a difficult decision five or six years ago and we had underestimated the amount of conservation so we didn't sell as much water as we hoped and you had to raise rates by 10 percent just because of that so that's the downside and not being cautious and using a uh, estimate that will presumably be exceeded and you'll sell more water than, than your budget um, it's much safer to do that have it flow in the reserves than to have to raise the rates and is, so, it, is it is it Madam Chair, or Miss Chair, Ms. Chair, Madam Chair? I think we can Chair. go with Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay, <laughs> fine. Um, I like Madam Chair, but that's I'll be, be careful with Madams. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh, here we go. Vanessa. Behave. Um, um, I, I, may I? Um, I wanted to ask Sharon a question. Uh, I agree with John's point um, about you know looking at the last ten years or so um, because this is not something we really want to be making money off of, but just covering our expenses. But I did note that this this total this is a total budget of over seven million dollars. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And um, right now, uh, so seven million. Right now, we have a little more than half a million, and I'm sure that'll be whittled down between now and the end of the fiscal year. Correct? You mean a half a million that we haven't collected yet? So we've re we've collected six million three thirty eight six forty two, and we have seven thirty six yet to collect. Yeah, we're at ninety percent, just about. We're at eighty nine point six percent. Yes, um, I was looking at the the, the total revenues line. Mm -hmm. Is that the correct one? Yes. Revenues. So yes. so it's. Well, I think you're looking at see when you look at available budget, that's the budget that's remain remaining to be collected. To mm -hmm. remaining to be collected. It can be confusing looking at this, so I maybe should have explained that. So when you're looking at this, when you see the original appropriation, it's our original budget we started the year with. Mm -hmm. If anything's in the transfer and adjustments, it's because we've made some adjustment at a town meeting. 
um, and so then we have a revised budget. And then year-to-date actual is what's been actually collected. Yep. And then for revenues, if you have an available budget, it means that it's money that's not been, available budget is very misleading, but it means that we haven't collected that amount of the budget yet. So. Okay. Um. So it, it does read kind of funny, as you pointed out, but that's kind of how these news reports are. They're not perfect in every way. <laughs> so that's not a, a fair comparison that it's a $7 million budget and we're saving X amount of dollars. It's hard to know how much extra we're going to have because we haven't fully collected the $7 million. So it's hard to really know, but it looks like we're trending faster than I would expect. So uh -huh. yes, we'd have some excess at the end. What would you expect at this time? I would expect us to be somewhere in that 75 to 80 percent range, and so being at 89, 89. yeah, so we're, we're a little ahead. I and mean, it, it, you, you don't know, could, you know, receipts could slow down and we could just get there. It's hard to know, but it seems like it's it's ahead of our expectations is what I would say. It isn't safe to say that this is the time of year that um, the sprinklers go on? Mm -hmm. We're actually collecting, though, off of the time when they don't yeah, go on. when they're not on, yeah. Oh, that's right, because so the collections quarter, don't happen. Yeah. That, that those would collections won't happen until yeah. next fiscal year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seasonally, you probably wouldn't normally be around 80, yeah. let's say, or 85 even. This so year. it's hard to know. I mean, it seems to me we would have some level of regeneration just from this area yep. of revenue. And it seems to be um, standard throughout. Um, so if I go to sewer, they're at 90%. <laughs> of their budget, 90.4%. Um, so I, I see that we don't have any concern about a deficit here. Definitely some sort of regeneration will happen for sewer as well is my expectation. And the same thing is true for stormwater. Not as much, of course, but they, they've pretty much almost collected the entire thing to 89.4. So all of them are very healthy in terms of what we've collected. Usually there's more of a look on my part is to be sure that we're not going to have a deficit. Obviously getting too much money is never a problem for me, but I get what you're saying. Um, you don't want to be t charging too much on the base. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of gone over the last few years, there's some things we've done you know, around excise tax. It's kind of hard and, you know, to know what usage yeah. is going to look like, honestly. Yeah. It's hard to know. Well, you know, in looking at this, the other thing I saw, and I, you haven't gotten to it yet, but it looks like the expenses are trailing in the other direction. Yeah. It, it, that's so our expenses are trailing <laughs> low, and our revenues are trailing high, mm -hmm. and, you know, that would have been valuable information. We just need to think about pulling that information together. Well, the expenses seem on track for the time of year, correct? So we are. Seems it oh. seems that way. I mean, there are definitely some things I had to like. Oh, geez, what's going on there? Um, and I'll pull that up next if you guys are okay with these slides. So, so, uh, Vanessa. So really, it, it we can't really tell yet how much money we might be making off of this. No, the, not these it's slides too soon are to say to for see, sure. To see yeah, vision. it's just kind of an update. Where are we as of April 11th? Is right. all you're you have to yeah. match the revenues. But to you the can make some assumptions looking at it, like hey. So in terms of like this is high level for water. Mm -hmm. um, they're at 73.3 percent, so they're close to where I'd expect to overall. Yeah. Um, but capital's kind of you know on the low side, and so. That's not unusual because in water, sewer, and stormwater, a lot of the projects that they're looking to award for capital projects are done in the warmer months, so they're they're awarding yeah. them now. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they haven't encumbered them, and, and they usually get a little wrapping from me going, are you going to have this done by June 30th because I don't want this money to close out? And so I did have a discussion with each one of, you know, on each one of these water, sewer, and stormwater with um, the um, town engineer to see where are you. Yeah, Ryan. Where are you in these processes? And most of them are either out to bid right now or have just been awarded and will be encumbered shortly. Um, and so that's where we are with water and sewer and storm, actually. I actually have a slide if you want to see the detailed projects, but essentially what I got to when I asked about capital was that each and every one of the items I questioned were either out to bid and are about to be awarded or already awarded and are waiting um, a So they're going to get it spent before yeah. you get to, the end, yeah. get to the end of the fiscal And I just year. try and do that as a courtesy too to just yeah. remind them, hey, in case you forgot yeah. this money's been awarded, can you make sure that this is going to be encumbered by <coughs> year end? So, um, so this is kind of high level. There's, you know, and this is just summarized too, so that you don't have to see all the lines that make it. I could always provide any level of detail if it's ever needed, but this is the, the most compact way for me to show you financial data. 
Um, for sewer, if we move on, the capital was the only thing I was really looking at. Again, sewer capital was the only thing, but then I did look at the debt, and there's one, there's only one payment left for sewer. That's 351200 and so that's the majority of what's left in available budget, and it's due in June. So that's why that looks funny. <laughs> and then the capital, again, same sort of thing, projects that are out to bid or have just been awarded. And once they've signed a contract, they do what they call an encumbrance as a PO. It holds the money, brings mm -hmm. it forward to the next year. So if, if the project spans two multiple years, the money is going with it to the next year, so you're not worried about running out of money. So. And as far as stormwater, it was the same sort of thing. Capital was, but I have a couple other comments here. Salaries look low. Stormwater is a very small department, two employees. Um, and we're down a person, so salaries are trailing dramatically, what we would expect. So there's definitely going to be turn back there regarding salaries. And expenses, when you only have one person, like from my conversation with the DPW director, there definitely can be some trailing of expenses because only one person's working, only so much is getting done. Um, and then also they, they spend more in the spring and summer. You know, so that's that would be a reason why that's trailing so much. And then capital, the same thing. They put things out to bid. One thing they weren't sure. They're like, we're trying really hard to get that one encumbered by year end. But it's nice to have that reminder from me or from Bob, whoever actually asked the question. Hey, this is sitting up here. Why is it not encumbered? Um, and so we're all looking at it because we don't want to see money that's been assigned for a project go away because nobody was paying attention. So. Yeah. That's pretty much all I have to share with you, unless you have more questions. Anybody have any questions for Sean? If, if I Go ahead. may, the last one is um, how are we doing at getting that one person uh, who's all alone uh, uh, a companion? That I don't know. HR legal issue. Ah, can't say. Not a town issue. Right, got it. But it ends up being a regeneration issue because we have a budget and we're not spending it. So yeah. you're actually okay. going to see money coming back to their certified, they call it a certified surplus when it's an enterprise fund, free cash from the general fund. So it will go back to the surplus. So the HR can't say we're interviewing or type it. Okay. It just dramatically affects the way this looks, but I don't yeah. really know much more than that. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sharon. So thorough and easy to start. Follow. Or do you want to take five minutes and I can walk next door again and see where they are? Why don't we take a five minute break? Okay. Right. I'll let you know. Thanks.
threading the Google link, threading Facebook, um, regarding a gift for some of the fields. So I will turn it over to Mike. Thank you. Um, Thank you for the time on the agenda. As she said, my name is Mike Wondolowski. I'm the president of Reading Little League. I've been a Reading resident for 11 years now. Uh, my wife and I moved up here to the Birch Meadow area. We have three young boys. Um, I became the president of Reading Little League last September, and one of the real things that we want to do is an accent change, change in the positive sense. And I'll try to work through these presentations quickly, but please feel free to let me know if you have any questions um, as we go along. So uh, the first thing uh, that we did is we actually sent a survey out to all of our parents. Uh, we had 454 kids play last year in Reading Little League. Happy to say that number is higher this year. But that being said, we really wanted the feedback from the individuals that were you know, paying the dues uh, to play baseball in town. And from that, we came back with and created a capital improvement plan. And we started prioritizing what were the projects we wanted to do first, second, third, and on down the line. So hopefully you actually uh, start seeing my face more frequently, as long as this evening goes OK. <laughs> so um, that being said, the first thing that was top of our list is doing some work at what we call majors field. Some of you may know it as tennis court field. These are the high school tennis courts down here. The high school uh, and rise you know, preschool is, is uh, in this area here. So when you look at that field on a nice sunny day, it probably looks like the best town to play baseball or best field to play baseball in in town. That being said, if you came to it even two days after a rainstorm, we lose the most games and practices actually at this field. Uh, I believe due to the foundationary uh, material underneath the infield itself. In addition to that, one thing that's newer, maybe about the last five or so years uh, when it comes to Little League, is once you get into the 11 and definitely 12 year old age range, they're able to play uh, the game at a larger dimension. Okay, so just I'll have a diagram here in just a moment. Basically, that larger dimension would be a 50 foot pitcher mat to home plate, 70 foot base pass. And once again, it'll be simple to see in just a minute. That being said, we do not have a 50-70 field in Reading currently. Um, and it forces us to rent space. So our home field uh, for Reading Little League 12-year-old plays over the summer is actually down at Pine Banks Park in Malden, uh, where we paid about $3,000 last year to rent field space in order to participate in uh, what's called the Bay State League. Surrounding towns that have 50, 70 fields, I won't name them all, but you'll see some Andover, uh, Bedford, North Andover, Winchester, just to name a few um, here. So what we're starting to propose here, hopefully you'll see, is dual purpose. Um, being able to play at an additional dimension that we don't have today in Reading. And then secondly, to uh, vastly improve the materials that the infield is uh, used at to hopefully have fewer rain outs and rain down practices. So to oversimplify things, this is your standard Little League field, and this is what Majors Field is today. It's a 46-foot uh, home plate to pitcher's mound, 60-foot base pass. All a 50-70 field is, is having a 50-foot pitcher's mound, 70-foot base pass. The purpose of this is after you get from a 12-year-old, you go into a 13-year-old, and then when you're 13 and 14-year-old, you start playing at a major league size diamond. This helps ease the transition to the larger diamond. By doing this, it's really important to note that the field could be used at its current dimensions, but also at the new dimensions as well. Okay, so become more flexible um, for both. We could use it with a seven-year-old game, and if we want to use it for a 12-year-old game, either later that day or the very next day, we could do so by moving the bases and things like that. So from a high-level view, the big thing to understand is that with this project, is none of the fencing or perimeter of the field would change at all. That we would not change a fence. Uh, what would happen that you'd find is you'd find that the infield dirt would be moved back approximately 10 feet. And you would find that the mound would be larger to accompany what you'll see on the next slide, which would be, if I can get there, oops. A 
mound that would actually effectively have two pitching rubbers. Okay. The first would be the exact location where it is today, which is 46 feet to home plate. The second would have an additional rise by uh, two inches vertical and four feet back for to be able to play at the 50, 70 uh, dimension as well. So our recommendation here is to rebuild the infield at majors with higher quality foundational materials. Okay. Also allow for games to be played at either the 46-60, which is current, and 50-70 dimensions in the future for all 12-year-olds. We would slate the work to be completed in fall of 2019. This would be wholly a gift to the town, uh, paid by Reading Little League Baseball. Once again, there'd be no change to the perimeter of the field, fencing, anything along that lines. And the work would be done uh, by a company by the name of Sports Turf Specialties, or STS. Some of you may be familiar with STS. They have a very long history of working on Reading fields. Um, actually, this is Thursday. They'll be working on our Little League fields to just get them ready to play for the springtime. Um, I believe they also redid Morton's field. Yeah, we hired them 15 years ago, and they did exactly what you're doing here. Yeah. They dug it out. Yeah put the right stuff in, dramatically, <clears throat> dramatically changed the usability of the field on following rain. I mean, it was night and day. And these are the guys that did it. Um, they also, um, uh, <clears throat> when Gillette was turf, it was not turf, it was grass, that was them. Um, they put uh, Shea Stadium in. I mean, they, these guys are, you've picked the right people for sure. They're good. So our goal is to do it once, and our goal is to do it right. Um, with that, I believe this is the last slide of this project that I have to propose today. Um, before I, um, maybe, I don't know what next step is, but either way, before I get there. Talk about what happened next door for this. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, this actually started back, I think in October, I believe I met with uh, Jenna from Rec, Mike Hannaford from Parks, I think it was Billy there, Billy? Yep, Billy okay. Taylor was there, and, and Chris Cole. Oh, Chris, thanks. Um, and just had really an informational <coughs> gathering, had a conversation, what are the next steps? Um, we shared the estimates with them, so they were very comfortable with both STS and the work that would be done, so they have the specific estimates that we received. We went to Rec Department last, the Rec Committee last month, maybe last month and a half, um, got approval and, and sign off from um, from them, and they direct me into your uh, <laughs> your direction, and I'm now here. All right, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Uh, yes. Vanessa. Um, so I, I'm I'm a little confused by what's in the packet and what what you pre presented. Um, so 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 in the packet. Um, the recommendation was to re uh, erect uh, privacy fencing, yeah, uh, provide sorry. toilets. Um, we haven't got there I, yet. I have two separate. Part two. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I will get to that though. Okay. Yeah, they will be much clearer in about eight minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mike, would you like to continue with the second presentation? And then oh, okay. Sure. I've That's got it in two separate pieces if you want to do that. Well, I have a question for Bob on the motion, so I don't leave. Okay. Let Mike go ahead and finish the presentation. The, do the second one? Go right ahead, okay. please. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. <clears throat> so the second one is a continuation of some of the survey feedback and our um, capital improvement plan. This one has to do with the very fun topic of temporary toilets. So we had a number of questions in the survey. Uh, one of the open kind of discussion items we had asked our parents, and by the way, 146 parents completed the survey, is do you have suggestions to improve writing Little League Baseball? The most common response was, the biggest issue I see is the poor condition of our fields and the lack of our bathrooms. So obviously you see we're trying to do something with the fields starting with majors. The most honest response, and hopefully this is appropriate for the select board, <laughs> is bathrooms, come on people, we need to pee, and not in the woods of the buildings. I didn't write that, I didn't write that, somebody wrote that, 
I thought it. I was going to say I told Somebody's someone at work. That. I told someone at work if I didn't get a chuckle there, I know this is not a good night. Okay. <laughs> so either way, um, so what are the steps taken, right, to get temporary toilets? Once again, worked with you know Parks and Rec as our starting place to say, you know, Jenna has basically been my quarterback here. You know, where do I need to go and what do I need to do? First off, we three of our three of our four fields are located at schools or on school property, as I would say. So we first got permission from the Barrows principal, Josh Wheaton principal, and the superintendent for uh, the Majors field, which is near Reading High, um, Reading High, as I just mentioned. Obtain temporary toilet permits from the health department, which if you need those, they're the last four slides of this presentation. And then also met with a member of the Rex, I'm sorry, Parks Department to actually walk the fields and try to figure out what are the best locations um, for these. Because the other, other thing that we want to do is make sure that these uh, temporary toilets were discreet, at least enough, to the residents of our town. Because the reality is, if you know Hunt Field, if you know Eaton Field, and if you know uh, Joshua Eaton Field, we have the butters. Okay. Um, and we just actually had a meeting uh, with maybe about six or eight of the abutters that came um, and had some questions, had a few concerns. Sometimes the concerns weren't actually about the project, but either way, um, we get past that. But our recommendation here is to erect privacy fencing to be respectful to the residents that abut our fields. Fencing would be on three sides of the temporary toilet. This obviously would be far too large, but this gives you a representation of what it would look like. So meaning a chain link fence, this chain link would, that would be used would be the same style that's used as the backstops and the fencing of the uh, park currently. So I think if Majors has that black kind of coated, uh, I think the other three have this uh, kind of galvanized steel or whatever it might be. And then obviously the privacy um, kind of uh, feature there as well. The temporary toilets themselves are four feet by four feet by eight feet. Um, the proposed fencing, basically a six inch buffer on either side, we're proposing would be five feet by five feet by eight feet. Uh, I didn't put it in here, but I did measure the one down at turf two that the height of that fence is eight and a half feet. Um, all costs would be paid for once again by Reading Little League Baseball uh, as a gift to the town. So that would include not only the fencing on three sides at the four fields I'm about to go through, but also the monthly maintenance um, from the uh, Throne Depot, which would be the company that would provide them. Um. So what's, the name, what's the name of the company again? It's Throne Depot. Throne Depot. Throne Depot, and the salesperson's name is Lewis, but I just don't think he wants to say Lou. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be one of the best Oh, come on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you know, trying for me to come back. Okay. All right, so this isn't taped, is it? Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Yeah. All right, so some, someone's laughing at home. All right, so uh, either that or my like 40th birthday in a couple years, hopefully. Uh, okay, so we're talk about the placement. Okay, so this is Hunt Field, uh, which you may be familiar with. Um, this is the one that, quite honestly, the residents that came, uh, probably about five of them or so were from Hunt, um, they didn't love this location, okay? Um, and I basically said, listen, right now what's happening is you have a 10-year-old that's in the dugout, needs to use the restroom, runs over here, and goes over here. So if you want to move this closer down, this would be between basically where the little parking area is and the playground, and the playground yeah. I'm fine. Because guess what? They're going to get exercise, um, and they're going to run about the same distance that they do today. If that is easier to stomach um, for location-wise. That one we talked about, and Rec can jump in whatever is appropriate. Um, we talked about that this porta potty would be approved at the um, basically approval of a new location down here by Parks. Does that you follow me on that? Yeah. So this one would be the only one based on the slides that you have in front of you that we would consider moving. Outside of that, the you know the three-sided fence. Um, would all was it the neighbors that live on that street that were there tonight? Uh, I mean, yeah. it would just be logical, probably. Yeah. Both sides. Both sides. Both yeah. Sides. Yeah. 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 Yep. 
Uh, Joshua Eaton. Uh, put actually, it behind the scoreboard over there. What's that? Put it behind the scoreboard. Is that what you got in mind? At Hunt. Well, we have to be uh, 20 to 30 feet from the road. So that would be too far out. Yeah. Um, oh, because they got to get in the. Because service. they have to be able to service it. Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it. They service it once a week on Tuesdays for Reading. Was that Throne Depot? I can't remember the name. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. So I can give you their information. Luke. Yeah, yeah, Luke. Um, <laughs> Luke. Second field here is Joshua Eaton. Um, I will, will actually say we did have individuals from Joshua Eaton that live in this area um, that were actually thrilled um, that we were doing this. Sure. Uh, very, very, very pleased. They had other concerns about things that have nothing to do with this presentation, <laughs> and um, which I completely understand as well if I was them. So that would be the location here, just as noted. Uh, Barrows Field, uh, very similar. Actually, we had folks that know people that live on this street at Barrows. They also said they'd be very excited because this is a very hot place to go, unfortunately, to the restroom um, if you're a child or even an adult. Um, so no change there. And then at uh, Majors Field, um, we initially would have liked it a little closer you know, to the dugouts. That being said, uh, you can't put it on concrete or walkways, which are here, and there's a lot of kind of, there's not really flat ground so much over here. Um, so that's the kind of the most logical place that Parks and I uh, decided. Right near John's office. Well, actually, it's out of the sight line of the rise of the administrative oh, it's too. The yeah, it actually indeed. sits off by itself yeah, okay. behind that fence. Um, Vanessa? Sure. Um, one question about um, the Joshua Eaton Field location. Yep. Um, and I don't know how far kids at that age can hit a ball. Yes. But is it possible for the for people running to the bathroom uh, to be walloped by a, a ball? It's a great question. Uh, two things I would say to that. Uh, one is at Joshua Eaton, you are talking about predominantly eight, nine-year-old individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so short answer is for them to hit past this walkway is extremely rare. More importantly though, um, this is not to size. This is quite a bit in foul ground. Okay. Um, so if you, if you, I guess, you know, kind of foul, if you had a foul, extended foul line, it would come out here. Mm -hmm. um, once again, it's not two sides. It's, it's out of play. So yeah. they're not using the upper left-hand corner uh, field? That's pretty far. Here? Yeah. Oh, that would be a major league shot. Major, major <laughs> yeah. league shot. Yeah. Yeah, or anyone on the board. <laughs> What's that? Or anyone on this board. I'm not going to speak for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long ways. But that, that's, that's, a, okay. that's a shot and a half. Yeah. All right, so thank you. The, this would be the field I'd be more concerned in. And quite frankly, uh, uh, I'm not concerned. Okay. The kids that play at that are not. That, that they're far. just not yeah. going to turn on the ball and get yeah. down that corner. I mean, they're young, they're young kids. Yeah. You might, to give you some example, you might see four balls in a game hit outside the infield perimeter in the air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea. Right. Never worry. That path that goes up the middle never yeah. gets hit. Yeah. Or seldom gets hit, but shall we say. It's a great it's a great point. Well, and my kids play if, soccer. If this was our 12-year-olds, so, then I'd have, I'd, I potentially could have a concern there. Yeah. Um, so that was it. I, I, as I said, the, uh, the, last four, uh, the last four slides are the um, health permits. Mm -hmm. So from the rec side, should I kind of go through what we just agreed on, or is that... From your side. Why don't we that? let recreation chime in when, okay. if you're done? I'm done with the presentation. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Emily? Emily Ford, Sisson, Jim. 92 John, uh, current chair of the recreation committee. So Mike came in last month um, and presented the first part of his presentation with the improvements to Major's Field. And we approved that. Uh, we, we approved a recommendation to, to the board select, select board to approve it as presented. Um, and as for the porta potties, we have a very complicated motion um, that I can read. So, um, before you jump into that, uh, I've seen two motions for this. One has stipulations that will accept it through December 19, uh, 2019, continued upon experience at feedback from the public. 
Yeah, that was me. Is that you? Okay. But I didn't um, know what they would do tonight, so. Okay, and then I have the one from recreation. Okay. So is there? I'm certainly not proud to have mine thrown away. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so. Are we acting on these in two separate things? Are we required, it's, Bob? It seems like there's two very separate requests, so yeah. Got the field thing, which is kind of that's the way that you are written here. It's in a separate okay. motion. Yeah. Um, so, are you okay with reading the having the motions that we've? Have you seen these motions that we're looking at right now? Probably. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Not not today, but I've seen them. If, if you wouldn't mind reading, it would be okay. Okay. Um, so, John, would you like to read the first one? So the first one is move that the board approve the infield rebuild at the Majors Tennis Court Field as presented and accepted as a gift from Reading Little League Baseball. So that's kind of a standalone. Okay. Put straight a second? Forward. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Uh, now, the second motion that I have here includes the stipulation um, for a period let's wait until the <laughs> police cars go by okay um, which is approved temporary toilet placements through December 19 and then we'll review it then based on experience and feedback from the public that's the one I have the other one I have from recreation has no such stipulation uh, is there a reason why we would want to include this I'm looking at Bob Jenna and Emily as far as the temporary approval um, I'll just start and say that uh, you did say you live on John Street, right? Just for the record, I wanted to make sure that was clear. <laughs> um, from experience, um, porta potties are an issue that the neighbors sometimes have a great deal of interest in. Um, until you place one, you don't find all the abutters and their interests. Mm -hmm. And from my experience, having the first policy and maybe the only policy I ever wrote was porta potty policy as a town manager, um, I learned from my experience that you want to be very flexible with the neighbors. Because again, no matter how well you've advertised and how you, you know, tried to contact them, you don't know. I have no strong opinion that it should be temporary. It just gave you an opportunity as a board just like you do with uh, typical annual liquor licenses or any licenses, and having another look at it. Um, um, but if Rec has, um, you know, a great deal of comfort with a different motion, I'm certainly fine with that. John, did you? I, I, the only thing that I would be concerned with, I mean, this is a gift, and maybe you guys have a problem solved. So why don't I just right. be quiet and hear what you guys have proposed, and then maybe that problem is solved for me. So. We propose that we recommended that the temporary toilets at Majors Field, Barrows Field, and Josh Weedy will be accepted as described, um, adding secured doors to the portable toilets uh, and posting signage with contact information for Red Recreation Department and Reading Little League in case there's an issue, um, and possible revisions to the Hunt Field location after Reading Little League meets with the Parks Department to discuss the possibility of moving it more toward the top lot and away from the abutters. Super complicated. No, it's actually yeah, pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. But I, you don't have a, you don't have a, um, I'm sorry. We don't have a 10 date. Um, yeah. Or a, a temporary. That was really order. my question, Vanessa. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. But, but I, but we, well, that, that's at your discretion. Yeah. Sure. Um, the, at Hunt idea. Street, it started out by being on the other side until those neighbors objected, and then it was moved to the other side. So I'm just saying the board has to be open-minded, and I'm sure everyone will work together. Um, so. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I had a uh, comment, um, and, and that is to sort of meld your um, proposal, your motion, with the one Bob crafted. And, and what I, I like uh, about Bob's is uh, for the reasons he, he stated, um, it gives, it, it's hard to pay attention to everything in town, everything we do here. So when the porta potties go up, my guess is we'll hear, we may hear or may not hear um, more concerns. And, and at least it, it gives us time to see what the public has to say. Um, and then, you know, if it's, uh, if, if the solution can be found in another direction or if it just, that's the way it is, we can't make everybody happy. Um, I'd, I'd love the opportunity 
to be able to rediscuss it, to rediscuss it in December 2019. And I think the, the response from the residents will be um, more staid if we do it this way. Um, I was wondering um, if I'm comfortable with the concept of a blended motion, but I was wondering if the time frame makes sense based on the contract or the conversations with Throne Depot. Does like a December 2019 time frame for a revisiting make sense based on what your, your uh, conversations glad, with them? I'm glad you brought that up because that's one point I actually didn't hit on. Um, these, the actual porta potty themselves, would be out of there right. probably about the middle of September. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically think of it, we'd want them there for the uh, spring, summer, and fall seasons, um, and then taken out uh, thereafter. Yep. I guess the other thing I'd stress too is that obviously the permit yeah. is only good for a year or so. I know health is obviously different than, than you all, but you know, they could always object, I guess, as well. So it sounds like October might be a good time to revisit. Or you could just match the March. Well, my thought is that if we need to change the location of it, if we revisit it in the fall, then yeah. Reading so Lookley has time to reconsider. Yeah, I, I would actually. Uh, John? I, I, I think that we're losing sight of, first of all, we're talking about our job here is the gift. It's not where they go. You know, I mean, parks and recs are working on the details. Yeah. You know, they're the ones that work with the real users and are dealing with the abutters. Now, we will deal with the abutters if they're, you know, bouncing yeah. off the walls and they've got the pitchforks and torches out. And that's fine. That's kind of our job to deal with that. But so, the, so a couple of things I think we need to think about in this motion. I, Essentially, the way it's been presented, it sounds like the Recreation Department thinks it's fine. There obviously needs to be an adjustment at Unfield. Not shocking, given that's kind of really surrounded. I mean, that makes sense. But I think that's, for us, it's the gift. You know, that's what we're deciding tonight. The other thing, and I guess I would ask this of you, Mike. Yes, um, if I was the organization making the gift, I wouldn't think that it, I'd be called on should the town make a decision that it got put in the wrong place to have to fund another gift. I think that becomes the response. I mean, we, everybody does their best to figure out the right place to put it. You know what? It might not be the right place. You know, it might not be the right place at any of them. But at a certain point, um, we can't ask a private organization that's stepping up to do this in the greater good of the community to th to be the, the emeritus maintainer of where it is i mean that kind of at a certain point we, we so you know we take the fees that we get from all these fields and there are fees being paid on all these fields that are supposed to cover expenses once the gift is made if a decision's made that these got to go someplace else it's kind of not for tonight i don't think John, I think that's a great point. So why don't we move forward with the generic motion would be my recommendation. And then can we ask then either Bob through the yeah. staff working with Recreation and Reading Little League to see where we stand as far as the neighbors go come the sure. fall after we have a full season under our belt. And then if we need further action, then we can consider it at that point if we need to. Um, could I I'd just like to respond to, to John? I think. I agree with all that he said. Um, I guess my question is, you, they're going to be removed in the fall anyway. Not the fences. Not the... Uh, the I mean, they're building the three They're going to the expense the, of creating privacy, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. a privacy location so you don't have, you know, mm -hmm. a big blue porta potty looking at you, you know, all summer long. I mean, it's, you know, it's being done discreetly, which... You yeah, know, I think is right. right. It's, it's you know, it's, right, a, it's right. a really great gift, um, so, especially for neighbors that are used to you know people running into the woods and yeah. you know next to their garages and everything else, and that's been going on for for decades around so, here. So, John, I sent you um, a revised motion um, by text. Could I ask you to read that? Sure. <clears throat> Although now that I think about it, that one wasn't split in half, so you might have to adjust accordingly. 
So this is to move the accept. Let me just read it rather than move it. And then, yeah. Yeah. is that what you'd like me to do? Yes, please. Uh, move to accept the gift from um, Reading Little League for temporary toilets and private fencing at Majors Field Barrows and Josh Wheaton. Further recommendations for secured doors on um, portable toilets managed by Reading Little League and posted signage. Um, with contact information so it, yes I mean we could certainly go with that but see I, I think we just defer to recreation they that was actually their motion I know yeah. but I guess for today what I'm saying to you is mm -hmm. we're just really we're the gift guys it's like you know let's accept the gift uh, my recommendation is that we create a motion that we accept the gift and that we leave you know supervision uh, of all of the details to recreation because they're the ones really dealing with the okay. I think I so mean that that's what I think but I'll I'm do whatever you guys want the board is what? Yeah, so, if put that. so John you want to make a motion um, yeah I move that we um, that we accept the gift from Reading Little League Baseball that includes temporary toilets on an annual basis and um, privacy placement of those toilets as based on you know recreation parks um, um, discretion do I have a second I'll second any further discussion um, just one question for the rec committee uh, are you comfortable with that yeah Okay. So we'll pass the ball <laughs> over to you. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good All those in favor? Great. Uh, Mike, thank you very much. Recreation, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to the league. For yeah. Yes. Very thank generous. You so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. The, uh, you know, that field thing is not cheap. Right. All they're, right. They're ponying up serious wondering. money here. Um, I don't know if you want to share what that's going to be, but I have, a, <laughs> um, I have a suspicion that that's a pretty big number. It'd be close to 40 grand. Yeah. So, that Four, was. Yeah. so we didn't, I didn't want to lose sight um, of the generous gift. I think we sort of got bogged down in some we other did. details. But thank you for your but thank you. You're all great. Thank, thank you so much for your generosity. Appreciate yeah. it. Great. Yeah. All right. Come back so <laughs> um, we have a couple of uh, new, a uh, couple of other items on the agenda. One of them is to review the town manager goals, and the other is a change of manager to OEAs. Um, with Mark not here with us and him being new to the board, may I recommend that we postpone the town manager goals update so that Mark can? Is that fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Sure. Um, great. So let's move over to the change of manager for OYIT. Uh, Bob, am I handing that to you? Um, uh, no, no need to. Uh, there's no one here for it, so you can just read the motion. Okay. It's a simple paperwork exercise. Uh, John, can I ask you to read the motion? It's yes. Five indeed. F. Um, move that the board approve the change of manager for an annual all alcohol license boys restaurant and bar at 26 Walker's Brook Drive. Do have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Great. So, um, as, as uh, Andy mentioned earlier, we are postponing the select board liaison assignments. Um, so that Mark can participate in that. The only one that we would like to consider this evening is the VASC, the Volunteer Appointment mm -hmm. Subcommittee, of which I am currently a member, and we need one other person to participate so that we can start those meetings uh, next week, I think. Um, be possible. First week of May. Okay. So oh, first week of May. Um, we're aiming to uh, advertise all the vacancies tomorrow. Correct. And then we get a good two weeks, and that puts us right to May 1st, which is the first week with that. Um, we're good to go for meetings if you are. Okay. Um, so, um, the VASC tends to have a heavy May meeting schedule, uh, and then it tends to taper off significantly for the rest of the year, only being called as needed. Uh, so I did speak to Mark, so I know his opinion on whether or not he wants to be a member. Is there any interest in someone who wants to, is excited to join the VASC? How did the um, thing sort? I mean, I'm 
I have no burning desire. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, I'm happy to let uh, you and four, four out of Whoever five else. were interested. What's what that? that? Four out of five members were interested. So in interested well, and guess who was it? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, you were one of them. Where? <laughs> Number 22. <laughs> well, did anybody rank it above a six? Um, um, yeah, I, got, I, got, I, I can't remember. Let me give me a minute to see. Well, I did because I'm on it. Yeah. So. Um, where is it on the... Um, it's the very top. Well, I think in you the, being on packet. it is really important um, for continuity's sake. Yes, yes. and that's one of the yeah. things that we had agreed to, that right. one person that remains was, for yeah. two years and they're mm. staggered. Yeah. So... Um, so Andy ranked so the Andy three and John a six. Yeah, I, I, uh, so twenty. I, I would enjoy. I would. <laughs> so was I the highest? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh, here, yes, I ranked it as a three, narrowly beating out Halsey by three points. Um, <laughs> wow. And I think Mark listed or it. losing out depending. On Mark how listed it as, as an eleven. Oh, um, okay. I, I would in very much enjoy doing it. I think it's set up that you have one more year to go. Yes, so we would stagger. We would stagger, and then I'd be it for two years. So two but if point. I wasn't reelected, then you'd have to find somebody else for that Correct. spot, yep. obviously. Yep. Um, I, I would enjoy doing it with you. Okay. Uh, I think I would learn a lot. But um, there is a week in May f at, during which I will be away. Someone else could probably cover there's any. We won't leave you hanging. Whether or not you cover it, it is really important that you obviously have two members at a meeting. Yes, yes. I understand. Okay. Um, let me, t I don't, we, we put eight dates down. I don't know, Caitlin, maybe six of them are needed. Five. Did you guess? Maybe eight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think about 80 something incumbents that you want to see. Yeah. yeah. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, good times. <laughs> um, all right, so I will, uh, as a point of order, Bob, do we officially need to nominate each of the liaisons for a vote? You are already a member, so you don't need to be nominated, but to add someone else, you should nominate okay. them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and nominate Andy to the VASC. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, pointing Andy to the mask. Great. Uh, all right, and all other liaison assignments will wait until our next meeting, which I believe is May 7th. 7th. Thank you, Bob. All right. So we are on to, we're going to postpone that, approval of minutes. Okay, so, John, can I have a motion for the February 26th, that's 6A on this list? Yep. <coughs> Move that the board approve the meeting, the meeting minutes of February 26th, 2019 as amended. <coughs> okay. um, so do I have a second? And you want a second this one? I, th I think I should abstain since I oh, wasn't present course, at the meeting. Oh, of course, of course. I was trying to be inclusive, but you were present. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. Great. Uh, any discussion on the February 26th minutes? Um, I have a few, a few, um, a few, a few. Okay. Um, first of all, are we supposed to fill out the minutes respectively submitted by? It's just a, or is that, can we just leave that blank? It doesn't matter. I can put my name in there going forward if you'd like. Yeah, pr probably, I think, um, in case we get audited by the state or something. Um, so the, 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 board the um, second paragraph where it says, um, Chair Friedman, blah, 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 um, he started off the meeting by apologizing to our inspectors for what he wrote in the packet. And I think it's important to put in what I wrote, so people, um, and it was, and, and I think I said this, un understand where, st right, so it would go, wrote in the packet regarding the phrase, un and I have this down, I can send it to you, but regarding the phrase, quote, understand where staff are struggling. Um, and then I think we have two negatives in there. Um, he did not mean 
it to be negative or taken in a negative matter, I think it's sufficient to say he did not mean it to be taken in a negative manner. Okay. Um, small point. Um, oh, so on uh, 6A2, top of the page, just a point of uh, clear, two points really. Um, it says uh, he had a good discussion with the Board of Health regarding his concerns about them not giving out health funds. Technically, the Board of Health doesn't typically give out health funds. Um, so I, I would just, and to, and to be a little more um, specific about, uh, because I was, um, the not giving out enough fines, I just clear, revise it to read um, about uh, his concerns about, I'm sorry, his concerns about the lack of food code violations over the last two years, and that's it. Um, and uh, and I and I think it's important to say that um, in in the next sentence he feels he feels that the board of health will pick up the matter moving forward. As a result, he felt it appropriate to remove this item from the agenda. You have to send that around. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll get that. I'll get that to you. Um, and I think. Um, then again, under the, 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 the health fines, them not giving out enough fines. Um, uh, it's not that they, again, um, they, they, didn't, they didn't give out any, any public health violations in the past two years, which is what I, I specified. So um, saying not, them not giving out enough fines is a little, um, a little rough, um, and then finally, and I, and I, I feel personally that this should go in in this explanation. I explained this. The, this, um, he explained that he felt he was between a rock and a hard place. Um, either go to the board of health with his, with his concern and be accused of acting like a board of one or first discuss with the select board and being criticized for not talking first with the board of health. I just want, I stated that I want it to be in the official record. I can send you the writing. It is, it is what I said. And I, I want people to understand that it's a very difficult position for a liaison to be, to be in. You know, it's, it's a lose-lose situation. So. And that's all she wrote. Any additional edits? Uh, all those in favor? Okay. Opposed? And Ann, you're abstaining. I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining. All right. Um, Ready for the next one? Yes, please. Move that the board approve the meeting, the meeting minutes of March 12, 2019, as amended. One second. Yes, second. Great. Uh, edits? Just a second, I gotta find it. This is the 12th. Six, it's. Uh, I actually have one edit on page 6B5 near the top. Uh, it's the third paragraph. I have it written out here for you. I'll just give okay. it to you after. But it says, Ms. Salvar noted we should use a little less. Uh, this year, in preparation for needing more next year, she suggested we use 900000 this year. Uh, that's all I have. Andy, do you have anything? Uh, on this one, no. Okay. John? I'm all those, good. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Move that the board approve the, midi, the meeting minutes of March 26th, 2019, as amended. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Edits? Um, I had an edit. Um, oh, I have a lot of edits, Caitlin. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, come on. Um, so on, what is it? Um, six, six C4, I think. Um, it's on the hearing to amend the select board policies one. 
Um, oh, yeah. Um, so it says they discussed how to assign or nominate liaisons um, and ultimately decided it would be best for each member to rank their choices and the board can pick from there. I don't know if, it, if it's... Um, if, if the board, we did discuss the reason for doing that. Um, during that meeting, the reason was that uh, previously when the, the, when the chair no nominated someone, it put, put, if someone else wanted to do it, created a bit of an uncomfortable situation. Um, did we want to put the reasoning for that in here, or is that just? No, it's necessary. Necessary, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I actually had one comment on that. It's uh, 63. The paragraph that begins with Angela or North Fresh and Clean. Mm -hmm. Is his last name listed previously? Or do we not I know it? I couldn't figure it out. And there's no sign it. He didn't sign it. Gene will know. Okay. Okay. That would be so my opinion. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All those in favor? Abstain? Is that it? Before you adjourn? Yes. Um, if you don't mind, there's one comment I should have made during my town manager report. Um, we also reached tentative agreement last week, which was confirmed this morning, um, with RCTV to continue as the local provider. Um, the RCTV board has approved the draft contract we had. So next week at town meeting, there is a warrant article to create an enterprise fund and then to have a budget in front of them. We have an agreement. So I just wanted to report that. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yep. Second. All right. All those in favor? You are the chairman for life. This is. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs>